Hey, it's Josh here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install and set up WordPress. This is actually part one of a little five-part mini beginner tutorial series I'm doing. And I'm doing this for those of you who are just getting into WordPress. I totally understand when you get into WordPress, it can be a little confusing and a little daunting as far as what it is, how to set things up, how to get going and how to have everything in place so you can start building websites. I know when I got started, I felt the same way. So I'm gonna help you, those of you who are just beginning out with that. So we're gonna start with how to install it and set it up. And then we're gonna move on to some other things that are gonna get you ready to build awesome websites. So without further ado, let's dive in. All right, guys, so we're gonna get started by installing and setting up WordPress. And the biggest question I get from people who are new to WordPress is what the heck is the difference between WordPress.com and WordPress.org? I know it's a little confusing and I was gonna do a whole separate post on this, but I figured I would just pull up uh, a, a snippet from some other articles that I've already pointed this out and I will link to these below. But the biggest difference is with WordPress.com, they essentially own everything. You do everything through WordPress.com. They have all the hosting for you and basically everything is on WordPress.com. Whereas WordPress.org is what's called open source and you can essentially use WordPress.org through different hosting companies. Now you're gonna to wanna to do that because you have full control. With WordPress.com, you really don't have any control. It's a lot like Wix or Squarespace or some of these other platforms where they kind of handle everything. WordPress.org is yours. And the beauty about this is that most hosting companies will use WordPress.org to be able to install and set up WordPress for free, which is awesome. So for example, I use and highly recommend SiteGround. This is the web hosting that I've used and trusted for many years now, but there's GoDaddy, there's Bluehost, there's all these other hosting platforms out there. Uh, I use SiteGround and love it. And you'll see here, when I log into my SiteGround account, they, gives us, they give us what's called cPanel. Now, cPanel is what's gonna be found in most all hosting companies. And you'll see right here, oh, look at that, a WordPress installer. So WordPress is literally just a, generally a one to two click install for all hosting platforms and it's awesome. Now it may look a little bit different. What you're seeing is the cPanel on SiteGround, which is short for control panel. However, it looks a little bit different on GoDaddy. It also looks a little bit different on Bluehost or other hosting companies, but it's all set up around the same. And I do have a whole course on a cPanel course because it's super, super important to understand this. So I'll make sure to link that below if you're interested in learning more about this because it's super important. Now, one thing before we install this, I did want to mention too, if you go into SiteGround, they recently upgraded their backend and it looks more like this. It's actually not technically cPanel, but it all acts the same. A lot of the same options you see in cPanel, you'll see here with the new backend, and then they'll have more guided installation uh, tutorials and stuff for you for setting up WordPress. It's all still very easy, and I will do a separate video explaining the new SiteGround layout, but right now I just wanted to, to show you this because this is what most hosting companies look like. So. All that stuff to say, let's go ahead and install WordPress. We're gonna click WordPress installer. And again, whatever hosting company you use, you're generally just gonna do the, the one-click install. And we are going to install WordPress. Now, generally you might have an option to choose the version. I like to go, always go with the most recent version. And then we need to choose a domain. So I'm gonna choose a subdomain that I have set up for us. And I don't have security set up on this one since this is just a test site. So we've got that one set. Now here's where you can give your site a name. So you can say, you know, my site name, whatever that's gonna be here. And then you can do a description or a tagline or anything you want there. And now here's the important part is you get an option to set up an admin. So this is what you're gonna use to log into the website. All right, so I've got username and an admin email and a strong password set up. And side note, you wanna make sure you don't use admin as your username or something that's easily hacked. You wanna ideally have a nice username and an email that is gonna be strong as well when you set this up. Now, usually with WordPress installs, that's all you need. You're gonna have some advanced options where you can actually choose some more details about the WordPress install, but luckily you don't need to worry about that. If you're curious about the database and the table prefix and all that kind of stuff, that's why I have my cPanel course because that will explain what all that is in more detail because it's super important, particularly when you're migrating sites. But we don't need to worry about that right now. So all we did is we've got our subdomain ready to install WordPress. We named it and we've got our uh, account info there ready to go. So now we can click install. 
And the install is complete. Didn't take any time at all. Usually it only takes a handful of seconds for it to install. And you can see here that the website is live. So if I click this link right here, it's gonna take us to the website. If I go back and I click the admin URL, it's gonna take us there where we can log into the website. Super, super cool. Now, depending on what hosting company you have or you install WordPress through, you may get some sort of WordPress starter thing like this, like SiteGround has that. For now though, I'm gonna exit it and we are ready to set up WordPress. Now, in the next video, I'm gonna cover in a little more detail the dashboard of WordPress and what all these are. But for now, I wanted to focus on a few settings that are under, coincidentally, settings. So if you click under here, it's gonna take us to general, which is gonna have the details that we set up with the, set the uh, site title and the tagline. It's also gonna have the WordPress address and the site URL, which should both be the same. And with these, you also wanna make sure that if you ever do a, an SSL certificate, so it's secure, you wanna make sure that these have S in there. But for right now, we're gonna keep it like it is. And then the administrative email address that you set up is going to be there. And then the only other thing apart from that are the details for the time zones and the date format. You'll just want to make sure you have this formatted to your location or your clients. So a lot of times I work, I'm based in Ohio, but I have clients in California. So I want to make sure this is all set up correctly towards their time zone. So important stuff to know. And then the other thing you can check out are the options under here. So we'll cover these really briefly here. Writing, I generally don't touch anything in this uh, section. You can if you want to, but I very rarely ever uh, adjust anything here. The next really important one though is reading. Reading is gonna have a couple important settings, mainly for the main pages. So you can select a page that's gonna be your home page. This is super, super important because WordPress needs to know, hey, which page is your home page? Now we haven't set up pages or anything yet, but when you do, you wanna make sure it's selected there. And then depending on the theme that you're using, you can select a certain page for a post. Again, some themes have modules and things like that, but if you needed to do a, a blog page, you may wanna make sure that's set as your post page. And then a couple other things here that are really important. You do often wanna adjust this section right here for the blog pages shown. Uh, reason being is a lot of times this can affect other plugins. I one time had a, a, mod, a gallery plugin and it was only showing 10 images and we were like, why isn't it showing more? We'll come to find out this was affecting that. So sometimes you might wanna bump this up to 30 or 50 or 100, you can go as high as you want. Now the other big thing here is this guy right here, search engine visibility. You can see right now it's checked to discourage search engines from indexing this site because this is just a beginner site, but when you go live with the site, you wanna make sure that is unchecked because Google will not pick up your site and no search engines will find it if that is selected. So you wanna make sure if you go live with the site that that is unchecked. But in this case, again, it's a, it's a development site, it's a test site, so we can keep that uh, selected. Now under discussion, this is where all of your settings for comments are gonna be. So you can just go through this depending on your site. If you have a very active blog, you might wanna have these selected to where you are gonna see every comment that comes in. What the pain about this is sometimes if you end up getting some spam or anything like that, you'll end up getting a lot of notifications. So it's up to you whether you wanna have this selected. For general sites that don't have a blog, I always have all of this unselected. But again, if you have an active blog, you might wanna put that there. And then you can just go through each of these settings and uh, adjust it to whatever works for you or your clients. Now media is one that I usually don't touch, but you can. You can go in and you can adjust image sizes on all this stuff, whether it's gonna be a thumbnail size size or larger image uh, image sizes in your posts and things. The big one here though is the file. So by default, and I explained this more in my cPanel course, but by default, when you upload images and files to WordPress, they get organized into months and year-based folders, which is really handy. So I always have that selected. So best to go ahead and check that out just to make sure that's selected. And then the other big one here is permalinks. So with permalakes, you'll see right here that it's gonna display or it's gonna show you how your URL is going to display. I always recommend doing post name because this means that every page and every post is going to display like this with whatever you call or title that page right after the web address. In other situations, if you have this, it's gonna show the date, then it's gonna show the post, or some of my clients will get going with WordPress and then they're like, hey, why do I have question marks and P's and numbers in here? Well, that's because the permalinks are set to plain. So I always recommend post name. 
It's going to display the cleanest. It's good for SEO. Some blogs like to have the date in the or the URL. I personally don't like that. They're going to see the date on the post more than likely. So I don't think it's great for SEO to have this in there either, particularly if you want to have an active blog, people referencing posts from years ago. So I always recommend doing post name, then you'll be good to go. You can always go into privacy and adjust that, but that's up to you. Nothing big there. And there you go, guys. That's an overview of some of the general settings to get WordPress set up. And of course, now you know how to install it through cPanel. Again, things may look different depending on what cPanel you use or what hosting you use. But what we would just went over is basically the process and how easy it is to get going with WordPress. Super easy. All right, join me in the next video and we're gonna explain all this in a little more detail.